French colony since 2007 to assist with training and capacity building. In January, a 400-strong support and protection team joined them. On Friday, soldiers came under a kilometre-long rebel ambush. The following day, 200 were attacked by 3,000 rebels on the outskirts of Bangui, and a high-intensity 13-hour-long battle ensued. Sporadic fire on SANDF positions continued during the night. Yesterday, rebels raised the white flag. Central African Republic leader Francois Bozizé, who himself seized power in a coup in 2003, fled to Cameroon yesterday. Bangui, a capital looted and in disarray. 13 South African troops perished in a rebel onslaught. Hospitals are inundated with local casualties. France has deployed 300 more troops to protect its citizens and the airport. Back home, chilling details of a hopelessly outgunned and outnumbered local force emerged. It was a high tempo, high intensity battle that lasted for more than nine hours. Uh, the South African forces were about just under 200 because others were still in the base. And then it was uh, 200 against plus minus 3,000 rebel forces. No additional troops will be sent to the rebel-held country. No troops will be evacuated either. And our being there was basically related to the tasks that I had given. And I said that we were therefore in our base. We're not fighting anymore until we were attacked. We then defended ourselves. The Defence Union disagrees. It wants all troops evacuated immediately. Sandu is much perturbed about the fact that there were casualties, especially given the uh, information that we have that the presidency was warned last week already that the situation was going to escalate and that conflict would be possible. Despite those warnings, our troops were kept there. Uh, they are not there to wage conventional warfare or military operations. They were there for ex training exercises. Dozens of injured soldiers were airlifted to one military hospital in Pretoria. But some families are frustrated that the Defence Force has not kept them abreast of the situation. When we tried to call him, we tried to contact him, nobody's answering the, the phone. So we are worried, we can't eat. We don't know, we really don't know what to do now. There's nothing that we can do. We just hope and wish and pray that wherever he is, he's safe. Rebel fighters are set on sealing their power grab, but already cracks are emerging within the rebel movement. One pledge to name a power-sharing government in a bid to defuse international criticism. Pretoria.